I'm Susan Venner, I'm an architect, and I live in a quite an old Victorian house. It was built in 1876 in Balham, South West London. We decided three years ago that we wanted to reduce our carbon emissions by 80% if possible. And we gave ourselves a three year time span and a limited budget of around about £25,000. And the carbon reduction measures that we focused on were primarily insulation, both internally and externally, to the walls, uh, insulation to the roof, uh, the ground floor, and then we looked at uh, working with the windows, in particular double glazing, and we explored a number of options before selecting on the final choice. We also looked at saving water. For the external wall insulation, we chose cork uh, for several reasons. One, it's a natural material, and two, we were keen to support the cork industry that's suffering through the um, loss of cork in going into wine bottles. Um, it also has a very low embodied energy and was appropriate for using both externally and internally, which is in fact what we've done. On the side of the house, as this is a semi-detached house, we've insulated with 180 millimetres of cork in two layers, one layer of 150 millimetres and another layer of 30 millimetres. Um, and then internally we've used 120 millimetres of cork, which was then uh, covered in mesh and then plaster skimmed. Whereas on the external wall insulation, we've left the cork in its natural state and not rendered it. And the reasons for this were twofold. One, there was a cost saving by not rendering it, but also the colour of the cork as it is, is more similar to the existing colour of the brickwork. We have, however, added timber battens onto the external cork, uh, and this is to provide a growing framework for plants um, that are slowly creeping their way across the cork. The system we decided uh, on for improving up the quality of our windows was to reglaze the existing sash windows, which were single glazed, with a slim light double glazed unit. This involved taking out the existing glass and routing out um, about seven millimetres more of the reveal uh, into which the double glazed unit fitted. Um, it's a slim unit, as I said, which is about 11 millimetres thick, um, two layers of four mil glass with a three mil cavity, uh, which is filled with krypton and xenon. Um, and then on top of that, what you then, we then had to do was increase the weights in the box sashes. Uh, this was all undertaken by a joiner and the whole process of nine windows uh, took two joiners um, about four days. And then on top of that we also draft stripped all the windows, um, both at the meeting stars and all around the individual sashes. The cost of the works to the window, including the double glazed units and draft stripping, worked out at around about £200 a square metre, including the labour. So for each sash window, the refurbishment costs were between three to £400 a window, which compares very favourably with replacement uh, sash windows, which would have cost around about eight nine hundred pounds each. We've installed a wood burning stove, which we use to supplement the heat in the window, but also uh, as the heating source in spring and autumn when it's not quite cold enough to, or justifiable to turn the central heating off. And um, it is smokeless zone rated, so it's compliable with UK regulations. Um, we, all the wood we use is collected from street prunings from roundabout and or friends' gardens. Um, so we don't buy wood at all. It's all collected and is saved from going to landfill. On the front of the house, on the roof, we've st installed solar thermal panels, uh, which provide, uh, to provide hot water through mainly the summer, but will also provide a contribution during the winter and autumn months. We're also keen to reduce our water consumption. Um, it's something that not many people are really taking serious yet, but it is a big issue. Um, to date, we've installed two low flush loos and a, a flush reducer in another loo. We've also installed low volume showers 
on spray taps and have um, A-rated appliances for dishwasher and washing machine. And uh, with conscious behaviour in terms of thinking about how much water you use, we've reduced our water consumption to just over half the average consumption in London. So the average con consumption in London per person is 150 litres per day and we're down to 80 litres per day. The aim of doing the refurbishment works started out as being to reduce our carbon emissions. Um, in fact, during the process we've realised what we've also been doing is improving the internal comfort of our house, which although we knew would happen, we weren't fully aware of quite how much, how much more comfortable we would be. And this house has turned from being a very drafty, very hard to heat and very expensive to heat house into a very comfortable home uh, with significant low, significantly lower uh, utility bills than houses of similar size in the street. We started monitoring our monthly gas, electricity and water consumption um, before we started the works and have carried on monitoring on a monthly basis during the works and this has allowed us to see very easily how much our consumption has fallen from 2005 through to 2011. We also monitored four other similar houses in the street um, and you can see the comparison between our house and the other houses down here which show our consumption of gas and electricity is much lower than the other houses. Working on your house while you're living in it is hard <laughs> and it's disruptive um, to varying degrees. Um, the highs are, well, you end up with a really comfortable warm house. The lows are dust and debris and mess during the process. Um, and uh, your kids saying, when am I ever going to live in a house as opposed to a building site? One of the other things we wanted to show was that uh, we all need to think of our buildings holistically, not separate from the environment which, in which they live. So in the garden we've been keen to explore certain principles of permaculture. We've got 12 fruiting trees in the garden and three beehives. And I've been very conscious to provide plants in the garden, both suitable for the bees and also for other wildlife. 